Yeah, I spoke to both of you about this in your dressing room. I want to remind you again to obey my commands at all times. Is there any questions? Shake hands. Good luck. Rocky Sikorsky was 10 years old when George Foreman won his gold medal at the Mexico Olympics in October of 1968. That's one way to put this into perspective. And a look at George Foreman, who is not exactly svelte, but at 240, a lot better off than he was at 267. 10 pounds later and 70 pounds lighter comes George into this fight, round one. He had ballooned up to over 300 at a certain point. And with nothing else, this comeback in boxing has gotten him back down to a reasonable weight. Sikorsky looking more like a light heavyweight compared to Big Foreman at 209 coming in tonight from St. Paul, Minnesota. Now you see what Sikorsky's doing right off the bat. I think this is appropriate. He's not moving a lot, just giving him some angles. And he's trying to move a little bit left and right. And he talked about going to the body. He feels that's an important weapon. And George actually admits that the thing he likes least about boxing, he's honest about it, is taking a shot to the midsection. George Foreman was never a classic boxer, obviously. He always relied on his power. In later years, when he worked with Gil Clancy, Gil tried to, to imbue in him more of the appropriate techniques of throwing punches. It was a tough sell. And, and maybe in some respects, probably slowed George down, even though that wasn't the point of it. Regarded as probably the most powerful puncher of all heavyweight champions, George Foreman. Didn't have to throw a great many punches, didn't have to move a lot, even in his prime. So Korsky feels that the power is gone from that punch now. He just ducked down and lost his balance there. It's a good stiff jab flat in the face from uh, Foreman. And Foreman has a good jab, even though, as I said, he's not a classic boxer in his heyday, and now he's still got a decent jab. Halfway through the first round. Certainly not embarrassing himself at this stage. He's not doing much one way or the other so far, though. No, nope, just hanging in there, showing the jab now and then. A short chopping right. There's the jab again. The left hand. Korski trying to get inside and having a devil of a time doing it. Does connect with the uppercut with a minute to go in the round. Mention that Sikorsky has been 10 rounds with some heavyweights of some meaning. We mentioned Damiani at the outset. Adelson Rodriguez, he went 10 rounds and lost a close decision to him in Brazil. That name should only be important because that's the man that just retired Bone Crusher Smith. Beat him over 10, and uh, Smith retired after that. So Beat Leon Spinks, but well past his prime. Yeah. He says now he could beat Leon every day of the week, and he may have a point. It's possible. It's questionable what that proves, though. What could he do with George Foreman? He's winning round one. You can decide what that's worth, but he's winning it. 20 seconds to go in it. Certainly the busier of the two. He had a spell there where he couldn't get inside, but hands here in the closing 45 seconds is all very well. So far, George Foreman landed the big jab. He does not look like a million bucks. Sikorsky has not been knocked down very much just once in his last fight. He's got the reputation for staying on his feet and does here in the first round very easily and probably won it. This record crowd here standing room only. Very curious about what is to unfold here as we have been. Heavyweight Championship in 1952 and kept it for nine years. You see George Foreman standing up with a foot on the stool. I've never seen a fighter with that posture. I've seen him stand up, but not with his foot on the stool, kind of pointing at his. It's like a huddle in there. Sure is different. This whole night's a little different. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> this is true. Round two says he wants to fight Mike Tyson, but who doesn't? For the money involved these days, Larry Holmes gets his chance next time. Well, Talk about comebacks ending, but he didn't wait 10 years like George did. Right now, 
Now, what's not impressive about Foreman, and of course, it could end with one punch, he's got that power, though, is that he's not, his, except for the jab, which we just saw, the other punches he's throwing are not thrown very well. They're thrown in awkward fashion, and, and they don't have the quick. Tell you what, they got the right referee in there to handle this fight, Richard Steele. He's big enough, he's experienced enough, and he's just good enough to deal with what could turn out to be something strange with two big men. Korski's a very awkward puncher. Eddie Futch said when Sikorsky worked with Larry Holmes, which was with him, that was one of the things that they liked about him. They, was, he helped Larry get ready for that kind of style. But Corey's landing some heavy glasses. I'll tell you though, those kind of punches, I believe right now, had better knock Rocky Sikorsky out in the first five rounds. I really feel that if Foreman doesn't do that, he could have some problems later. If Sikorsky can deal with that punishment, because he's hitting George with some shots. Yes, he is. And in the later rounds, if George is tired, you know, Rocky may be able to do something more dramatic with him. Well, by way of guidance in the second career, which was launched March the 9th, George has finished his opponent as early as three rounds. It's taken him as long as six. He had a couple of four-round knockouts along the way. And really, in all truth, Tim Anderson, Bobby Crabtree, Charles Hostetter, and Steve Zowski are not good opponents. They're just not. The man he's in there with now is at least representative. They were of the caliber of the five he fought one night in Toronto yeah. back at his prime. A regrettable incident all the way around. Good hook by Zowski. Snapping left hook land. Form is delivering his punches. It, it's just not good. I mean, he's delivering them from the waist in a very strange fashion. See that? I mean, you can't be impressed with him. He's just not performing that well. He's just relying on one big bomb, whatever happens, to get the job done. Well, and that has always been the case with him. Not always, but most of the time. He's not here to uh, point, rocking the proportions. And he puts some punishment here. Some good shots he's getting through. But see, Rocky Zagorski is still standing there. Now, I'm not saying he's not going to get hurt with those, but he's not right now. Round two coming to a close. In the last 30 seconds, we've seen some big blows from Foreman. They continue. Remember I said George Foreman should use combinations? Now, this is not pretty, but it's a combination, and it worked. And Sikorsky was right in front of them, which is what his cornermen are telling him not to do. George easily penetrating Rocky's defense there, and in the corner, while we were away, Sikorsky's corner, they talked about how uh, George's hands were so low that he offers virtually no defense, and how Rocky should capitalize on that. Well, all well enough said, but can it get done? How do you see the scoring so far? I gave the second round to Foreman, the first round to Sikorsky. I've got it even at this point. Oh, great. Well, I don't know quite what I expected coming in tonight, but I will say this, it is by far from being a total embarrassment. The two rounds I've seen to this day, no. not a boxing classic either. No, because it's interesting and they're, they're both landing punches. <laughs> What it tells us about George Foreman's ability to fight for a title is another thing. Got a long way to go from what I've seen so far before that can ever happen. Again, the power is there. That's not the jab, and he's just going to try to bang his man. And the jab is one thing, as we said earlier, that George Foreman has a good one. That's as classic as you get. It's powerful. Considering he's almost 40 and he's had to lose all that weight, it's a fairly quick jab for a man that does. It is quick. That's the one punch. Oh, right hand. Stopped him in his tracks a little bit. He did stagger with a knee. Rocky is a very wide puncher. He loses a lot of power because of the way he punches. He also is going after a big man. That left hook may have stunned Sikorsky. It didn't get all of him, but he got enough. And he is in trouble against the ropes. He's taking all kinds of shots with both hands from Foreman now. Trying to hold on. Oh, good. There's a red left of Jack with four force. He'll be out of here by now. And he may be very soon. Foreman is closing in on the end of this bout as he drives Sikorsky across the ring. A minute to go. And Rocky is not by trade a boxer, so for him to buy time here is not going to be that easy. Well, he is very wobbly, and the punishment continues. That jab flush in the face time and time again. The jumping right hands, now the hooks. Foreman just teeing off on Sikorsky. 
and Rocky somehow stays there and comes back for more. Part of the interest in the lure here is that even though Sikorsky hasn't fought, the top of the heavyweight division has not been knocked out. So part of Foreman's mission here tonight, whatever you think of what he's doing, was to get a knockout. That was important. And my goodness. Look at his head snapping back. He reminds me of Randy Tex Cobb, the way he can take punches, but he's taking a terrible beating in the process. This is brutal. It is over. Richard Fields had enough, and frankly, so have I.